Hey guys, it's Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about dysfunctional defense mechanisms that family may use to either minimize, deny, or, or redirect any kind of dysfunctional behavior that is obviously dysfunctional. You know, I've been talking a lot about families with my actual families that come in to see me, and I've noticed throughout each session that I have, and even throughout the 12 years I've been in the field, there's specific defense mechanisms that are used by dysfunctional families, and it kind of helps to per perpetuate the dysfunction and unfortunately the children of the dysfunctional parents end up growing up and becoming dysfunctional adults which results in further further harm not only to the family unit but to the individual's ability to cope and engage in relationships so we're going to talk about dysfunctional uh, uh, defense mechanisms so that you can identify them in yourself and in your family so thank you so much for those of you who have come back to my channel uh, and for those of you who are subscribed and participating, thank you so much for that. And for those of you who are new, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button. Stick around with us. All this month, we're going to be talking about families. The benefits for you in today's video is that you're going to learn at least seven to eight defense mechanisms that are often utilized in dysfunctional families. All right. So let's just go ahead and jump in. I want to make this video pretty short and succinct. Um, I've been doing really long videos. I think those are good, but I also think it's nice to kind of mix in some short ones too. So I I want to make these a little bit short for you. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first defense mechanism. And it's actually a defense mechanism that Sigmund Freud came up with. Well, he utilized it a lot. And uh, while I'm not a Sigmund Freud fan, because some of his theories were bizarre and way out there, uh, there are some things that I, I, I do appreciate about him as an individual. Um, he did have some insight underneath all that craziness. So the first defense mechanism that he came up with was reaction formation. Reaction formation. Reaction formation is the whole idea that you have an emotion that you really are either afraid to express or you don't want to express it. So what do you do? You choose an opposite emotion and cloak yourself with that. So let me give you an example let's say that you work with an envious co-worker who hates the fact that you know you're smart and you're attractive and you have a wonderful family and you speak very well and you're getting successful in your position on your job let's say that they're envious of you but instead of showing you that they're envious they're going to be extra nice to you right they're going to be a little overly nice they might even bring you flowers to congratulate you they might even bring you candy to congratulate you it really is a dysfunctional way that uh, individuals who utilize this defense mechanism react to things. Um, you might even feel underneath the surface some seething envy or anger or resentment, uh, but they smile in your face instead. Well, family members can do the same thing, right? They gossip about you, they triangulate. I'm gonna put a video up here where I talked about triangulation. They triangulate. Uh, they, they, they engage in rumors, um, you know, they spread false things about you, they lie about you, right? They're very toxic behind your back, but then they may come to a family gathering or a reunion and smile on your face and hug you and say how much they loved you and missed you and wish they could see you more, right? So that's reaction formation, all right? The next one is displacement, and that's when an individual takes an emotion and displaces it, right? So for example, let's say your grandmother decided to lie to you and, you know, uh, uh, cause you to believe that she was never an alcoholic, but you find out that she was. Displacement is when she will take that anger, this this grandmother of yours will take her anger and she'll displace it onto somebody else and not you because you're the one who found out that she was an alcoholic you're the one who found out that she was lying about being an alcoholic but instead of her getting angry with you she takes and displaces it onto the grandchildren and she tells them they can't visit anymore so displacement is taking an emotion and um really a train of thought that is causing intense emotions and displacing it onto somebody else it's kind of like when you've had a bad day at work and you come home and take it out on your husband, right? Uh, yeah, a lot of people do that in families and you'll see that a lot with in-laws. Oh my God, let me tell you, in-laws, 
they can be really difficult and displacement and reaction formation are two defense mechanisms that they use the most all right the next one is sublimation this is another sigmund freud term sublimation the whole idea behind this is that you take an unacceptable impulse or strong desire or intense emotion and you put it into something else so you're in an argument with your wife if you're a guy watching you're in an argument with your wife and you know you really do feel like snapping out and throwing everything well instead of doing that you get in your car and you drive 90 miles per hour down the turnpike or the parkway right so that's sublimation you take a desire an unacceptable emotion and you take it displace it on to something else okay um and you put it into something else that's a little bit more socially acceptable speeding on the parkway or the turnpike is sort of you know acceptable uh, a lot of people go over the speed limit on the turnpike so you just kind of push it a little bit more um, instead of flipping out in your house and throwing things you just take it out on your you know your 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 car right you drive 90 miles per hour on the turnpike it's sort of socially acceptable so you feel like you can get away with it <laughs> all right and uh, a lot of men use that kind of uh, defense mechanism all right the next one you've probably heard of it's called uh, a gaslighting excuse me I'm gonna mention the next one which is stonewalling uh, but this defense mechanism is gaslighting and the idea behind this is that you know you sense some passive aggressive behavior in your family you sense that there's some anger you sense that there's some resentment and you have a little bit of a difficult time getting somebody else in the family to see and understand what you're going through so what do they do because they don't want to believe that that there's this undercurrent passive aggressive stuff going on so what do they do? They take and minimize it. They deny it. Oh, you're not seeing what you think you see. Or, oh, she would never do that. Or, oh, I really just don't believe that Clara would ever do that to you. I can't believe she would do that. That's gaslighting. It's really making you doubt yourself. And it's causing you to look at yourself and say, okay, did I miss something? Or am I over, you know, reading this? Am I... Am I worrying about this for nothing? Am I, you know, am I, am I missing something here? And so gaslighting is usually a tool utilized in domestic violence situations where, you know, the spouse says, look, there's something going on between us and I'm really disturbed by it. And the other spouse says, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't see anything that's wrong. You know, that's gaslighting. Again, it's making you doubt your own perception of reality. Okay. The next one is stonewalling, of course. And that's when an individual refuses to cooperate. They, they refuse to communicate. They refuse to meet you halfway. Um, you may get into an argument with your mother or your father in your family and instead of them picking up the phone to 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 talk about the argument they avoid you uh, they refuse to answer your voicemails they refuse to answer your emails and they even ignore your text messages messages they are stonewalling they are absolutely stuck in one place and they are not willing to move all right stonewalling is another abusive tactic that's often used in domestic violence situations the next one is circular reasoning i hate this I hate this with a passion and adolescent boys who are delinquent have the power to reason in a circular fashion and it drives probation officers police and therapists absolutely bonkers uh, because the whole idea behind circular reasoning is to take you in a loop right and it takes you around again and it takes you around again and it takes you around again and it takes you around so many times that by the time you get ready to complete another a thought on the issue uh, the person's already on to another topic right they're talking about the weather they're talking about you know it's gonna snow tomorrow can you believe it's gonna snow tomorrow that was really fast I can't believe it's winter and they may jump from one thing to the next to the next to the next and it kind of keeps you confused um, now there's there's two ways that I've seen circular reasoning it you know I've seen it that way but then I've also seen it where you know uh, let's say for example your family member let's say a delinquent cousin uh you confront them about something you know why would you have my husband do this work on your house and not pay him well this delinquent cousin may say i don't know what you're talking about i paid him and you may say well but you didn't pay him all the money he was owed and the cousin may say i i, I just i don't understand what you're talking about and you may say my husband worked on your house and he deserves to get paid right the cousin engaging in circular reasoning may say but I, I just don't know what you're talking about I wish I knew and so they're just taking you around and around and around and the ultimate goal is to get you confused 
The ultimate goal is to wear you down, to tire you out, right? And to cause you to feel that you're not making any sense. And so then, you know, that's where the frustration sets in and eventually you're just gonna drop it and let it go. All right. The next one is normalization. Um, in families where there's intergenerational trauma, uh, in families where there's domestic violence, there's a normalization of dysfunctional behavior. And what the family does is they take a dysfunctional situation and they put it in the context of we're a family. You know, we're a crazy family, but we're family. And that is not okay. Uh, a father molesting his daughter is not okay. Yes, yeah, you're a dysfunctional family, but there should not be any, you know, green lights going off that, okay, this is okay because we're a family. Absolutely not. Um, polygamy, right? I've had uh, clients come in and they've talked about friends who have engaged in polygamy. Um, and they've said things like, you know, he has two wives, three wives, four wives. And uh, there's been normalization of that kind of arrangement. Um, so you don't want to normalize dysfunctional behavior. And unfortunately, dysfunctional families do that. So that's another defense mechanism. Instead of looking at themselves, they normalize the behavior. And they do what the final thing I'm going to talk about is, which is they engage in denial and minimization. So they do all three of those things. They normalize they deny and they minimize. It's a nice way of blocking, right? It's a defense mechanism. It says nothing's wrong here. This is the way we function. We're going to continue to function this way. And that's not a good thing. Um, but sadly, a lot of families try to, uh, you know, package the dysfunction very nicely and put a bow on it. And they try to make it look like it's okay. It's not okay. Thank you so much, guys, for being with me in this video today. I hope it was helpful to you and comprehensive. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I encourage you to not only share this video to somebody that may benefit from it, but go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you so much for supporting the channel once again. Every thumbs up, every comment, every every day that you participate on this channel, it helps the channel grow. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there and thank you once again. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your night or day.